Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service. We're so thankful for everyone who could make it out this morning. We're especially thankful for the visitors that we have with us this morning. We are so blessed to have you be here with us, and we welcome you back anytime that you can come out and worship with us. Uh, special, special morning. That's the beginning of our fall gospel meeting. It's just amazing how uh, somebody says, way back in the spring, we're having a fall gospel meeting, and then that, it seems like a week later, uh, it's right here on top of us. It's, uh, it's time, especially as uh, I hope you were here for the our Bible adult Bible class this morning, which was uh, our brother Benjamin Lee's first lesson, and we talked about what a strange year 2020 has been. Uh, it, it seems like uh, just a few weeks ago, we were back in February, and, and uh, we never really heard much about this pandemic, and then what a strange year it's been. But uh, uh, at this time, let's uh, take this opportunity to silence our electronic devices and put those on vibrate so they don't interrupt our worship service. Um, uh, normally, um, well, normal normal is different than our regular normal. Uh, which is different than today. But uh, so normally uh, at, during this pandemic, we have been having just our adult, our regular Bible class at 9.30 uh, a.m. Then we worship at 10.30 a.m. Uh, right now we're not having our evening worship service, uh, but we are having a midweek uh, Bible class that we're doing on Zoom. And uh, if you're not getting the invitation emails uh, for that uh, Zoom access code, for those uh, emails, please see Nathan uh, this morning before you leave. He can get you uh, on that distribution list. And as always, our lessons uh, are uploaded uh, each week. Nathan takes the time to put those up on, uh, you can look at them on our Facebook page. Uh, and also, there's a tremendous amount of information on our courthousechurchofchrist.com website uh, with uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of lessons on there. Um, uh, as far as illnesses this week, uh, Sandy Salkel uh, is not feeling well. Also, uh, we have quite a number uh, that's in the courthouse reminders. I know I saw an email this morning from Sister Betty that uh, Jean had to go to the hospital yesterday, um, and uh, they ended up uh, uh, treating him and releasing him, but uh, Jean is still not feeling very well, so please keep him in your prayers. Also, our brother Bill Dowdy uh, is recovering from shoulder surgery this week as well as my, my wife Jennifer had shoulder surgery on Tuesday. Uh, we just wanted to thank everyone for their calls and texts. Uh, thanks for the beautiful flowers we got. Um, and it just means a lot uh, as you're recovering from a procedure like that. Um, our brother Tom is in sheltering arms as he's continuing with his recovery. And it's so good to see Sister Marcella here this morning. Um, and we just continue to pray for uh, brother Tom also, uh, Sister Joanne, she's continuing to recover from her broken leg after her accident. Uh, so many more that we can uh, keep in our prayers this week, uh, and we're just thankful uh, for the recovery of everyone. Um, also, great news this week. Uh, we have a, a new little member of our congregation, and uh, Sister uh, Esther Wilkinson, uh, Josh, and Meredith had their baby this week, um, and so that's uh, everything went well, and, and uh, we're grateful for that. So, uh, as we've been talking about for the last couple weeks and months, it's finally here. Uh, hopefully we're here for the 9.30 lesson to hear our brother Benjamin Lee. Got the flyer here with the schedule for the week on it. Today we had our first lesson at 9.30. We're going to have our second lesson right now at 10.30. Uh, then we're going to have a little bit of a break. And we're all going to come back for a, um, our afternoon lesson at 3.30 p.m. today. And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night this week, we're going to meet at 7 p.m. Uh, and also, um, uh, Brother Benjamin is going to lead our men's Wednesday class um, on the October the 21st at 10 a.m. here at the building. So plenty of opportunities to hear him speak. Uh, and and uh, if you missed the first lesson this morning, you certainly missed a good one. So I'm so looking forward to hearing the rest of your lesson this week. Uh, our order of worship this morning, Richard Joshua will be leading us in singing this morning. Uh, Paul Martinson will have the opening prayer. Uh, Tony will be leading the Lord's table this morning, assisted by Charlie, CJ, and Grant. Um, Brother Benjamin Lee will be bringing our lesson this morning, and uh, Nathan will have the closing prayer. Uh, so with that, uh, 
I will uh, turn it over to Brother Richard. Good morning. Good morning. Two things before we get started. First, if the song that's on the screen, not the song that's on the board, is because when I put my um, list together for songs and sent it to Nate on Friday, I looked at the list today and realized I sent him the wrong list. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get on the screen and get the, the right songs on the board that we'll be singing. That's the first thing. The second thing is when Nate gave his sermon last week, he was talking about the song leaders and he was talking about how um, the songs that was written, how some of the um, people that wrote the songs kind of changed the lyrics in some of them. Well, our first song that we're going to be singing, 558, Home of Yourself, I sang them, how would you say it? Um, the way we used to sing it back in New York, we had more verses. So this morning, we're going to be singing more verses than the one verse that's in the book. So if you turn your books to 557, Humble Yourself, that would be the first song. The book only has one verse, but we're going to keep looking at the screen and hopefully just sing um, four verses. Okay, so 557, if you have it, let us begin. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. Father, 
Father, we pray that when we leave here, what we learn, what we got from the lesson will go with us. And we can live it in our daily lives. Father, we have numerous on our prayer list. So we pray that you be with them be with their families, be with health care providers, nurses, and doctors. And if it's in your, in your will, Father, we pray that you return them to normal health. And Father, we pray for the leaders of our country going through some trying times right now. And we pray that our leaders will do what's right for our country. Not to benefit themselves. And Father, we're so grateful for all your blessings you bestow upon us daily. We're thankful for the creation you give us. We're thankful for the food you provide, <coughs> the air we breathe, jobs, homes, all Father, for the blessing from you. Let us always be aware of where these blessings are coming from. And Father, we ask for your forgiveness when we fall short. We're thankful for your Son and our Savior, Christ Jesus, who willingly gave his life so that we might have a home in heaven. All things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our song before we commune with the Lord, 155, 155, Lamb of God. Let us begin. Your only son looks into your eyes, but they have said.
Good morning, church. Good morning. As we gather around this table this morning, we are remembering our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, death and his burial. We have this example in Acts 20, verse 7, when on the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. In 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23, the Bible tells us on the same night that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, was betrayed. He instituted the greatest of all monuments, the Lord's Supper. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this and remember to me. In the same manner after supper, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it and remember to me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, and now more than that, is guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him, let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he who eat and drink in an unworthy manner eats and drink judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among them, and many are sweet. Each of us should be thankful for God's grace and his mercy. God knew before the foundation of the world was framed that we needed a Savior. That's why he sent his only begotten son into the world to die on the cross for our sin. Jesus willingly came into this earth, took on our sins, and died for each and every one of us. For just a few moments, I would like for us to think about some of the statements that were made from the cross. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was referring to us. We were the ones that spat on him, hit him across the face. We were the ones that scourged him, nailed his hands and his feet to the old rugged cross. Christ also didn't say a word. Another statement that was made, he looked down at his mother when he was probably in his weakest state. And he said, Mother, behold thy son. He said to John, Behold thy mother. He said to the thief that was on the cross, Today you will be with me in paradise. He said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was at this time, the only time in history, that God and Jesus had been separated. In six lonely, long hours, Christ suffered in agony. And after that, he said, I thirst. And after completing all that God had sent him there to do, he said it was finished. In victory, he said it was finished. And his last statement was, Father, into my hand, into your hand, I commit my spirit. Jesus died, not in doubt, but he died in faith each and every one of us. It's when we come to this part of our worship, we need to examine ourselves and see whether we are protecting the Lord's Supper in the, in the right manner. At this time, when the men come forward. The bread represents his body and hung on the cross. At this time, brother, we'll begin to grab the bread. Our God in heaven, we are so grateful for the scheme of redemption that she put in place before the world was. We thank you so very much, Heavenly Father, for the gift of your Son and our Savior. We thank you now for his bread that represents his body. We pray that as men we will look upon ourselves, that we might partake in a manner that would please you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
The fruit of the vine represents the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins. At this time, Father, we get a prayer for the fruit of the vine. Father, we bow our heads once again, this time remembering the blood that was shed upon the cross that your son, Jesus, so willingly and freely gave. Father, we are thankful for the redeeming power of that blood, what it means to us as Christians. And as we partake of this emblem this morning, the fruit of the vine, we ask that we direct our minds to that cross and to that blood that spilled down from his body and over all humanity. We thank you. We thank you for your sons. In his name we pray. This concludes the Lord's Supper. Now concerning the collection of the saints, this time also has been set aside, not serving supposed to give back to the Lord, we can prosper. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given orders to the church of Galatia, so much you do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay aside something, storing up as he is prospering, that there be no collection when I come. Paul also writes in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as his purpose in his heart, not grudging of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. With this in mind, we vow to give thanks for the gift. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful for this day and this time that you have blessed us to gather around this table and remember your Son Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sin. We pray, Father, you bless each of us as we give back to you, Father. Realize and follow that all our blessings come from you. Help us to give in a manner that is pleasing in your sight. And we pray, Father, that this gift will be used to further spread your word. We ask all these things in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our song before the lesson will be on. Um, or speak will be 754. Sing to me of heaven. <clears throat> this is kind of an upbeat song, so I hope Brother Benjamin likes it and have our congregation be kind of an upbeat vibe for a sermon. <laughs> 754, you have it? Let us begin. Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace. From the toils that find me, it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are resting so. Showers of great blessings so my heart will
marriage is strained. My mother is sick. I don't know how I'm going to pay rent for next month. Those were the words of a friend of mine named Michael, who lives in California. He shared that with me a couple of months ago, and I appreciated him sharing those words with me. Can you relate to anything that he said? If I'm being honest, being married now for 16 years, I have felt moments where our marriage has been strained. We've been married long enough, not even 16 years, it could be a couple of years, and you can have some difficulties in your marriage. And if I'm being honest as well, when it comes to health issues with family members, or in particular with your children or with your spouse, I can definitely relate to that. And don't get me started when it comes to figuring out how money sometimes is going to work, how bills are going to be paid. All of us at some point in time are going to go and experience a variety of challenges in our lives. Difficulties that may feel like we are walking through some kind of a valley. It can feel like these days may not end. And it feels like at times we may be the only ones that are experiencing something like that. One of the sad things about 2020 has been with respect to marriages. Where there have been so many marriages that have just crumbled as a result of the coronavirus. Have you heard people talk like that? Maybe you've seen some of the stories as well where... You know, it's fascinating how the one thing we often complained about pre-coronavirus, we wish we had more time with our families. <laughs> but then we get our wish. And we begin to see that there are cracks in the foundation. Maybe our marriage hasn't been as strong as we thought it was. And we've seen, maybe we haven't done as well with planning, with finances as we should have. We just kind of assume that things will kind of work itself out. There always will be enough money coming in until everything changes. We're all going to have some kind of valid moment. A moment of difficult days, a moment where it can become very fearful of what are we going to do? How are we going to and we began this series of lessons talking about staying faithful in fearful times. We laid the foundation with the fact that our Savior has risen from the grave. That changes everything. The tomb is empty. This morning what I'd like to do, I want us to consider a man who knew something about valley moments, who knew something about living in dark days. I want to consider a man who was a king. King David. If you have your Bible, open it up, please, to Psalm chapter 23. And while you're turning over there, you know, it's interesting when you start thinking about men like King David. We're going to talk about King David, Lord willing, this Wednesday as we gather together as men. David was a real man, wasn't he? And he helps us to understand what, what a man really is supposed to be, who we are supposed to be. But David is kind of intimidating, too. He was a king warrior, he wrote music, and he did so many great things in his life, a shepherd. And when you think about who this man was and how he lived his life, it can be very easy to, to, to talk about him and to consider what he said and, and say to ourselves, well, man, how, how do I even relate to this guy? Well, I think one of the biggest ways that all of us relate to him is the fact that he faced difficult days just like we do. <clears throat> He had concerns. He had problems in his relationships, in his household, trying to figure out how things are going to work out. And so as you think about Psalm 23, I believe there's a lot that we all can relate to 
as we may be traveling through the valley of darkness, and maybe you're not even going through difficult days. Maybe, maybe things are working out exactly as you want them to be, and that's great. I hope that is the case. But I am old enough to know that at some point in time, we are going to face challenges. And the thing about challenges in life and obstacles is that they often happen when we aren't really expecting them. They may even come in a shape or form or way that we're not even considering that we would be hit by it. And so I think what David is going to share with us or show us in Psalm chapter 23 is something very important. And I'm really driving for, to one thing as we talk about Psalm 23, of how we can stay faithful in fearful times. Let's read this together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It, is, it has to be one of the most comforting and encouraging psalms in the Bible. I typically smile by the time I'm getting done reading that psalm, and maybe you can, maybe you can quote this psalm from memory. Maybe you have it up in somewhere in your kitchen or your bedroom or somewhere in the house. While we have heard this psalm numerous times, we also have to truly apply the things that we can take away from David and what he knew about God and how he lived his life. I love the fact that when you think about what David was going through, and he's going to talk about his valley of darkness. David is going to do something before he even gets to that point. He's going to reverse who God is. David knew something about shepherding, and he knew something else about God. He knew how awesome God really is. He said in verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. There's no question David had a relationship with God. He loved God. And he spent time alone with God. I like to call that tag, time alone with God, where he would uh, pray to God and, and go to God for wisdom. And he knew that God was his shepherd. A shepherd is one who guides. A shepherd is one who protects. A shepherd is one who provides. And David knew that about his God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. David was rehearsing all of the, the blessings that God, no doubt, had given to him. Just as a shepherd is going to guide his sheep to give them the necessities that they need, the nourishment that they need, the water that they need, the comfort that they need, David knew that his God was doing that for him. He makes me lie, he makes me beside, he makes me, he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I love this fact that David was thinking about God and considering God and remembering the great blessings that God had given to him and knowing that who was the one that was truly leading his life? It was God. As you think about navigating through these fearful times, brothers and sisters, we need to know the one who's supposed to be leading us. Our Father in heaven. We need to know that God is the one that should be leading us in every aspect of our lives. We need to rehearse his blessings and his care and his comfort that he provides for us. I was talking to, to someone here after services, the 9.30 hour, and we were just talking about how, how quickly we can forget sometimes. We can forget what it is that God has truly done for us and how he provides for us. And more than ever, we need to remember who he is. And that's so important because when you get down to verse number four, David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David knew something about challenges. He had his valley moments. And I often wonder, what were 
What, were, what was he referring to maybe here in Psalm 23 and verse 4? You thinking about being on the run from King Saul for so many years? A man who was consumed with jealousy and, and envy and anger towards David? Was it one of the battles maybe that he had faced in his life? Or even some of the valley moments as a result of his sin. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David is showing us that there will be times in our lives where we will find ourselves in dark days. The valley of the shadow of darkness, or deep darkness as the margin of my Bible calls it. And yet what's interesting about what David is showing us here in verse number four is that, yes, there will be challenges, but we're not going to have to remain in those challenges. We have to make a decision and remember who it is that is truly leading us. Because he said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yes, he was in this moment. Yes, he was facing some challenging times. But he said that I'm going to walk through them. And who was the one that was going to lead him during this moment? Well, it was the one that he talked about in verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. And so as he was going through these valley moments, these dark moments, he's going to have to rely upon God to lead him, to guide him, to show him the way. And I think that's so important for me and for you as we face 2020 and 2021 and uncertainty into the future, that we will find ourselves in some very dark valleys. And some of the valleys may feel like there's no end to them. Some of the valleys may feel like there's no way out. Some of the valleys are going to feel like we're just trying to figure out where do we take the next step and how do we respond. And maybe you can relate to that at this very moment. Maybe it's with your marriage. Maybe you're on the verge of, of throwing in the towel. A lot of people are doing that. It's not just people in the world. It's God's people. So how do we respond in these fearful, challenging, difficult days? David reminds us, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. We don't have to walk around with great fear. Why? Because David makes it very clear he knew something about God. He said, you are with me. And as we think about our valley moments and what we're experiencing, we need to know what David knew. He knew so much about God. You are my shepherd. You are the one that leads me. You are the one that comforts me. You are the one that guides me. You are the one that provides rest. And while we can know all of these things, we can't just leave it at this idea of knowledge. We've been having these morning devotionals back at home with me, Nikki, and Josh, and, and I got it from, a, from someone else to have this idea, and I wish I would have been doing it a lot sooner or earlier, but we just sit down and read about five verses in the book of Proverbs together. In chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 3, we keep seeing this woman who is crying out in the streets. Wisdom. Josh has asked, what is wisdom? Well, knowledge is a part of it, and knowledge is a great deal, a great part of it, but it's not just having knowledge, but what? Applying that knowledge to your daily life. And David knew about God. He had a lot of knowledge about God, but it didn't just stop there. He applied it to the situations he faced. And that's what we're going to have to do when we think about what we are experiencing. Even though, all of us are going to have these even though moments, aren't we? Where things seem to be going well, where things seem to be going great, and we're getting the job promotion, and then we get that even though moment. Where we're going to have to have some further. Or the family is doing really well, even though that moment comes and our spouse drops a bomb on us. How are we going to respond? Or the challenges maybe with our children or extended family members or brethren for that matter. Life has a way of bringing about these even though moments. Even though when these moments do come, and they will, there's a way that we have to respond. Notice that David said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which means that he's not going to stay there. 
but that he's listening to the voice of the one who's supposed to be leading him, the shepherd. And that's what sheep are to do, right? They are to listen to the voice of their shepherd. And so as you think about what you may be going through or experiencing in 2020, David said, I fear no evil. He knew something, and it caused him certainly to take action. He said, for you are with me. So David lived a life of faith. He lived a life of faith and not a life of fear. So our, our lives are going to have to be connected. Our faith is going to have to remain strong and connected to our Father in heaven. Even though when these moments hit, when we are walking through this valley of darkness, we need to know something and we need to believe it with all of our heart. We are not alone. Let me ask you a question. Do you feel alone? course not. There's 50, 60, 70 people here. My husband is sitting right next to me. My wife is sitting right next to me. My children are sitting right next to me. Of course I'm not alone. Oh yeah, I get that. That's not what I'm talking about. Isn't it interesting how we can feel alone even when we're surrounded by so many people? lay next to our husband or our wife every night and we can still feel that way. Have you ever felt that way? Maybe you feel like someone, they, they hear you but they don't truly understand maybe what you're experiencing or feeling or going through. Or maybe you're not married. Maybe it's with respect to your friends and you have lots of friends. You know, it's funny on social media, Facebook, people can have thousands of friends yet science and research is showing us that people feel more alone than ever before. Do you feel alone? There are times, I'm sure, where King David felt alone, hiding out in a cave, hiding behind a rock, on the run, but David was never he knew something. God was with him. I want you to know this morning, I want you to believe this, and I can't tell you to do it, you have to do it, but I want to encourage you that no matter where you may be in your life, you're never truly alone as a child of God. And while we know that to be true, we need to be reminded of this idea that God is with us, and it's so interesting to go back to the book of Joshua real quickly. Throughout the history of God's people, this has been one of the biggest themes that is given by God to his people. You're not alone. I'm with you. In Joshua chapter 1, in Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 5, after Moses had died, in verse number 5, God is speaking to, to Joshua at the beginning of the chapter. In verse number 5, the Bible says, No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you not fail you or forsake you. Joshua needed to remember that you're not going to be alone in this. I'm going to be with you every step of the way when you cross the Jordan, when you defeat Jericho, and all those battles you are not alone. I'm with you. And as we go through our battles and, and, and obstacles that we will have to face, we need to know that we are not alone. In Judges chapter 6 will you turn there? In Judges chapter 6 Gideon would be called by God. And the angel of the Lord is going to speak to him, and the angel is going to remind him of the same thing. You are not alone. In Judges chapter 6 and verse number 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O valiant warrior. And Gideon said to him, O my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? Have you ever said something like that? Have you said it this year? If God is with us, we hear all these promises about God, and we hear these sermons every Sunday, and the Bible classes that we go through, and yet everything seems to be falling apart. If he is with us, then why is all this happening? It's a question that's been asked. And 
where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Now the Lord has abandoned us. Do you feel abandoned? Well, that's how Gideon felt. And I love how the angel of the Lord, the Lord looked at him in verse 14 and said, Go in this your strength and deliver Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? He didn't answer his questions at all. <laughs> Much like God did with Job. Let me ask you some questions, Job, if you think you know it all. You don't. But what Gideon needed to remember. In verse 16, the Lord said to him, Surely... I will be with you, and you shall defeat Midian as one man. That's what he needed to remember. That's what Joshua needed to remember. That's what David knew, and that's what we need to know. In fact, you see this theme in Matthew chapter 28. Look at Matthew chapter 28, and when Jesus gave the marching orders to his apostles before he ascended back into heaven, in Matthew chapter 28, and look with me in verse number, verse number 18. Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse number 18. Jesus came up and spoke to him, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. They needed to be reminded about this, and so do we. Look over in Acts chapter 18 and look at verse number 9, 10, and 11. Acts chapter 18 and verses 9, 10, and 11. Paul, of all people, we look at these men and we think that they never had any fearful moments, that they never maybe struggled with some things, but we keep seeing how they needed to be reminded as well, and so do we. In Acts chapter 18 and verse number 9, when Paul was in Corinth, souls were being saved. Yes, there were challenges as well. And so the Lord said to Paul in the night by a vision, Do not be afraid any longer. Do not fear. Don't be afraid any longer. But go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you. There it is again. No man will attack you in order to harm you. For I have many people in this city. So I'm showing you all of this because when you go back to Psalm chapter 23, there is a way that we walk through our valley of the shadow of death, brothers and sisters. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death knowing some things, understanding some things, and responding in a certain way. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death the way that David did, with confidence, with faith, and not fear. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. That's what it's all about. And as you think about what we're going towards in this idea of the valley of darkness, here is your one thing I want you to remember. Are you ready? Here's what we all need to consider. How are we walking in our valley? Maybe you're not in a valley at this moment. But you will experience some. How are we walking in our valley moments? You see how David walked. Faith. With purpose. With direction. But we need to ask a couple of questions. Are we walking aimlessly? There's a lot of people in America who are walking around not knowing exactly what to do. They walk around in fear every day. They walk around, walk around not knowing who to listen to, what to believe. Are we doing that too? You know, when David was walking by faith, his life was so good. It didn't mean that it was perfect. But it was just so much more smooth and direct and intentional. The times where he would inquire to the Lord, should I go into battle? And the Lord would give him an answer. And you could see he was walking with intention and faith and his eyes and his ears attentive to his shepherd. That whole situation with King Saul. Where he had King Saul where he could have killed him easily. And yet he was listening to someone else. God 
He had fear and reverence for God. And I'm not going to do this to God's anointed. But you know when things began to go off the train track, so to speak, in David's life? When he began to ignore the voice of his shepherd. When he began to walk aimlessly. See, that's what got him in trouble when he looked at that woman with Bathsheba. And then continue down that path. He's not listening to the voice of his shepherd. How are we walking? There's so many voices out there. Fox News, CNN, MSNBC, our neighbors who think they have all the answers. You know that one family member who knows everything about what you should do and how to respond. <laughs> Our friends who think they have a lot of answers, social media, and at times we listen to all of these voices instead of listening to God. And maybe the biggest mistake that we make so often, not maybe, it is, is when we decide to listen more to ourselves than to God. I have all the answers. Well, I know the, my marriage is not where it needs to be. And I know what God says in his word. Husbands, love your wives. Wives, submit to your husbands. Fathers, discipline your children. But, you know, I know he established marriage. And I know he has our best interests in mind. But I think my way may work out a little bit better. That's a grease fire waiting to happen. But yet we do that too often. And I apologize if I'm stepping on any toes. Because I did not come here to step on toes. My intention is to aim for your heart. If all I'm doing is stepping on toes, I'm not doing my job as a preacher and giving you the word of God. This is about changing our hearts. And the heart of the matter is we have to figure out who are we listening to? If we're walking, along, we're walking around aimlessly, we know what happens when sheep do that. They are in trouble. There's danger out there. Animals that are lurking, seeking to devour them. And the devil is after you and me. Far too often, we listen to the wrong voices. And the devil loves them. Then he has us. So are we walking aimlessly as the people of God, as, as his sheep? Remember in John chapter 10, what Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse number 27. In John chapter 10 and verse 27, he said, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Are we following our shepherd? We're either walking aimlessly or we are being attentive to the voice of our shepherd. We have to make that decision every day. How are we walking? David, he was walking here in Psalm 23, listening to the voice of the shepherd. And listen. We can become very stubborn as sheep. Guilty. And that's why in verse 23, or chapter 23, he said, your rod and your staff, a rod can be used for protecting the sheep, but also for discipline. And sometimes that needs to take place. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And yet David knew something else, that God always had his best interest in mind. No. That God is seeking to comfort him and to protect him. And so we need to think about this as we go through these valley moments. How are we walking? Well, David makes it very clear that we need to be listening to the voice of our shepherd. If we are truly his sheep, then we will follow him. Period. And here's the good news. The good news is that even in these valley moments, there's still something to rejoice over. In verse 5, he said, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Isn't that powerful? How could David rejoice in the valley moments? Because his mind and his ears were attentive to God. And he knew God. He knew what God had done for him, what he would do for him, what he was doing at that very moment. And he had reason to rejoice. And brothers and sisters, there is still reason to rejoice in 2020. We are here. We have the ability to worship God, the ability to encourage one another, the ability to be one heart, one soul as brothers and sisters in Christ. We have reason to rejoice. If Paul could rejoice in Philippians while he was in prison and told the people of God, rejoice in the Lord always, again I will say rejoice in the Lord, then we have no excuse. But maybe we're not rejoicing as much as we should because we're walking aimlessly. You see, when our ears and our eyes are off of our shepherd, that's where we begin to get in trouble. And it's so easy for us to do that. We know how to complain so easily. But do we also know how to rejoice in the same fashion? David said, I still have reason to rejoice, and you and I do as well. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love how David ends this. David is essentially saying, I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to remain with you. You're my shepherd. Where else can I go? Who is going to provide for me in the manner that you do? Who is going to protect me? Who is going to lead me in the paths of righteousness? Who is going to comfort me and continue to give me these blessings? No one else but you. Nowhere else to go. Do you feel the same way? Whatever you are experiencing or will experience or have experienced, you get to decide and I get to decide every day that we are either going to walk aimlessly or we're going to be truly attentive to the voice of our shepherd. And if you find yourself struggling walking in the manner that you need to walk in your valley, Maybe it's because you haven't admired your father in heaven as much as you should. Maybe it's because I haven't done that either. Well, that's what David did in the first part of Psalm 23. Maybe we need to take the time to slow down, to put our phones down, to get off social media, and take time to admire our God. Or maybe we need to do what David did all throughout his life, like in Psalm 32 and Psalm 51, where David confessed sin to God. That's where we become stubborn, though, sometimes, like sheep. Maybe we need to make some confession to God and confess our sins and repent and to do more than he expects us to do. Maybe we need to consider and grow in our lives even more and our walk with Christ even more and just make up our minds that I'm not going to go anywhere, that I'm going to remain with you, because you are my shepherd, the good shepherd. And where else can we turn? How are you walking at this very moment? I know we can look at everybody else and say sometimes, you know what? Yeah, that person really needed to hear this sermon. Well, I'm going to share this sermon with somebody else. That's good. I hope you do. But first, we have to look in the mirror. Where does Ben What's going on in Ben's walk? And how else do I need to hear more from my shepherd? And when I do that, when you do that, that's how we will be able to stay faithful in fearful times. Our shepherd loves us. And never let the world or the devil take you to think that he doesn't. He always has the best interest in our for us. If you're not a child of God, if you're not following the Good Shepherd, you have an opportunity to do so today. We'd love to study with you and help you to see what you need to do to be saved. If you're outside of Jesus Christ, now is your moment. And if you are in Christ, know that there is no valley too deep, no valley too dark, no valley too wide, no valley too long, that your God cannot lead you out of. Remain with him. Let's sing. Thank you.
just a moment at the conclusion of the prayer as I have an announcement for this afternoon. But let's go ahead and make plans to be back at 3.30 for another lesson by Brother Lee, as he encourages us to stay faithful in these fearful times and uh, talks to us about not dropping our shields. So let's make plans to be back later this afternoon. Let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, our creator, our righteous judge, we're so humbled to come before you in prayer, thanking you for the many blessings that you have provided. We have many things to be joyful of, many things to be thankful for, and we come to you praising you and honoring you and expressing our love to you for all the blessings that you provide, both our physical needs and our spiritual needs. We are so thankful to you for many things, for answered prayer, and many of our brethren who have undergone procedures and surgeries and are now recovering. We ask that your hand might still be upon them, that they have swift recoveries. We're thankful for answered prayer and bringing Brother Benjamin to us this morning, and that you have your hand upon him and his family back at home, that 
they may be reunited soon. We're thankful, Father, for him and his ability to present and teach your word, and what a powerful message it is, knowing that we have brethren who are going through their valley moments, that sometimes in our lives we go through those valleys, whether it is our health, whether it is relationships and family-related, whether it's educational or social, economical, or financial, that no matter what that valley is, no matter how dark or how deep, that you are with us. And what a powerful message it is to learn from the life of David, to know what David knows, and to put that faith in practice, knowing that we can lean on you as our shepherd, to see us through that valley. And as children of God, we might call upon you to praise you even in those valley moments, and tell you of your goodness, to tell you of your faithfulness towards us, and to tell you of all the things that we are thankful for. Father, we are blessed to be in this country. We are blessed to have the freedoms that we do, and we know there are saints throughout the world that do not have them. And we take courage and encouragement from them as they still continually meet, that if we should be ever faced with what they face every day, that we might have that same faith to walk through that valley of the shadow of death. We're so thankful to you, Father, for your Son, for that bond of fellowship that we have in him, that no matter what we face, you are with us. And we ask for your healing hand upon our brethren that are suffering, that they might be healed, that they might recover, that we might be an instrument of good for them, of their comfort, their encouragement. And we're so thankful for that answered, that answered fulfillment of prophecy in, your, in the church, a kingdom without borders, and in all your wisdom that we have brothers and sisters the world over that we have never met or seen, and yet one day we'll spend eternity with. We are so thankful for your Son and that bond of fellowship we share in his name. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. If you would just stick around for just a second. For lunch, we have reserved the back room in Shoney's. And we've, it's everyone that would like to come and, and have lunch and visit more with Benjamin is welcome to come out there. Their reservation starts at noon, so if you get there early, tell them you're there for the Church of Christ, the Courthouse Church of Christ, where they might even have it under my name, and you should be seated in that back room. So thank you. Thank you.